welcome to this podcast. My name is Kwa Boy. Today I have a very special guest. His name is Victor Antonio. And Victor Antonio, he has been a sales guy uh, for over 20 years. He has written over 14 books and he's a renowned speaker. And he's also got amazing courses which teaches you how to become a master salesman as well. I'd really like to introduce you to Mr. Victor Antonio. Thanks. All right, Victor, I'm really excited to have you on the show. Um, you know, it's been tough trying to get a hold of you. I know how busy you are, but uh, yeah, during, you know, during this whole situation, you know, we finally get to meet. So I really appreciate your time today and uh, it looks great, the, the backdrop. I really love that. And uh, yeah, so welcome to the show, Victor. Well, thank you for having me, man. Really appreciate it. Looking forward awesome. to this conversation. Awesome. It's going to be amazing. Cool. So I was listening to a lot of podcasts. You know, you're an amazing guy. You're, you're up there on stage. You've, you've written books and everything. And you, you're known as, you know, the master salesman, right? So, but prior to that, um, I'd like to know a bit about your background. So, um, so obviously you grew up in Chicago and then eventually you, you moved into sales. Can you tell us about the transition there? Okay. So uh, the, 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 give you the short version. Uh, families originally from Puerto Rico. I get that question all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so they, they moved to Chicago in the late fifties. Okay. And so, you know, grew up pretty much poor, uh, you know, in the inner city. And my mother was always about go to school, get the education. So you mm. get that great job. Right. So I got an electrical engineering degree and an MBA, uh, started working in corporate America as a software engineer, then moved into a, uh, uh in the telecommunications company. I was a, uh, wireless design engineer designing wireless sites. Yeah. And somewhere in there, uh, I got a, I got an opportunity to start selling in Latin America. And mm-hmm. it was a good opportunity for me to take it because, you know, at that time we had our first child. My wife's like, hey, can you make, is there any way you can make more money? I said, well, if I go into sales, I can make more money. Yeah. But I'll have to travel more. I said, you okay with that? She said, sure. Uh, she kind of said, sure, too quickly, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. yeah, let's travel. It's good. Ahead. And so... <laughs> <laughs> so and that's how I got into sales. And so from there, I got, you know, started as an account manager, eventually moved it up to regional manager, director, VP of sales and president of sales and marketing eventually. I'm giving you the very fast version. Yeah, I love it. So love it yeah. I came up the sales way first. So I always tell people I carried the bag, you know, I mean, door to door, knocking that whole bit. So, uh, and then May 9th, 2001, 3.48 p.m. to be exact. Mm. I decided to like start my own thing. I wanted to write my own books and start doing some, you know, some sales slash motivation training. Yeah. Okay. Well, but why it was a three forty one a.m. Like it was just uh, you just wake up, you know, in the middle of the no, um, p.m. p.m. Oh, p.m. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was. I was. I was president of sales and marketing. Uh, it's a four hundred twenty million dollar company, and you know, Qual, it's like that. That there's a time in your life, and maybe some people listening to this will get this. Yeah. Where you just want to do your own thing. You know what mm, I mean? Mm, mm. The company was great. There was nothing wrong with it. There was a good company, um, but there was something there. I call, I call it the quiet discontent. The quiet discontent is when you, you know what I mean? You just want to do your thing, man. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. I remember when I made the call, that's how I know the time uh, to the chairman. And I said, you know, I've decided to leave. And he said, you lose everything, man. Like stock options. You know, at that time my base salary was like 250,000. Uh, you know, average commission was like three, 400,000. So I'm losing a lot of money plus stock options, all that, but mm-hmm. I didn't care. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not because, you know, we have so much money we can bathe in it. It was just, I didn't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. And we just don't want to do it anymore. You just don't want to do it. So I made the call May 9th, 2001, 3.48 PM. Wow. Amazing. I love it. How you remember the, the dates as well. Um, yeah. yeah I mem- reminds you of that book um, by Michael Gerber by, uh, he wrote the book E-Myth. And, um, I've read that yeah, book. Yeah. I've read yeah. That yeah. Book. Yeah. And he talks about the entrepreneurial seizure. So I guess you went through that. Um, but I'm going to say never work, never work in your business, work on your business. On your business. I mean, exactly. Line. So true. <laughs> I so love true. That line. And, um, yeah, but you also, um, there was something that also happened. I think you met a sales guy. His name was Ken Cook as well. And, um, yeah. and I think, uh, yeah. So you were a sales engineer at the time, but he said something to you that, um, that really oh, resonated yeah. with, right? Could, could you explain the about Ken that? Ken Cook story. The yeah. Ken Cook story. I'm curious. I got to wow. get that one out. <laughs> that was, that, that, but it's a moment, you know. So what happened was I was, I, well, I was working on this wireless design. I, mm. Iowa State Power and Gas. And Ken Cook was the lead uh, uh, salesperson. And I was like the engineer. Back then we did four-legged calls, we called them. Four-legged people calls. People would go make a call. There's your four legs. Okay. And so I would handle all the technical questions. He would handle all the sales stuff. 
And so I remember fast forward, I think it took me like three months to design the thing. We were competing against Motorola. Uh, and then Ken calls me, I said, dude, we won the bid, we won the bid. And I'm like, oh my God, we won our first bid, right? Yeah, yeah. And so sure enough, he says, dude, I'm taking you to lunch, giving you a short version. I said, yeah. my man. And so I remember like, I don't know, one or two in the afternoon, we go to lunch, whatever it is. Or no, it was 11 o'clock, we came back about one or two. And I remember with the steakhouse and you know, I, I remember I ordered from the right side of the menu because I didn't care. He was paying for it, so I didn't care about the price, right? I, yeah, I, yeah. I should, I should say left side, rather. And <laughs> I remember I had a beard. I came back in the office. I'm all fat, dumb, and happy. Mm. And I'm walking in, and then this engineer named Roy Cole, still remember his mm. name, Roy Cole, was like, Victor, what are you so happy about? I said, man, you know, you know, Ken just took me, just won this deal. Ken took me out. Man, he bought me a steak. Man, he spent some real money on me. And then Roy was like, well, let me ask you a question, Victor. And I always joke that when somebody says, let me ask you a question, mm. it's never going to go well for yeah, you, right? Yeah, exactly. And so let me ask you a question. I said, what's the question? He said, uh, where do you take? I said, a steakhouse. How much do you think he spent? And I said, $50. He had to spend drop 50 bucks at least. Yeah. And then he said, one more question. How big of a commission check do you think Ken's going to get off of your design? Mm. And I just remember my stomach just flipping and me going, what? And Roy just walked away. And that was a moment for me, you know, like, cause he said, he'll probably make like 50,000 on average on the first phase. I hope oh. you enjoyed your steak is what he said. Something like that. I'm like, what? <laughs> and so that was like my sales moment. Let me leave engineering and go to sales. I'm sorry. You know, engineers mm. do a lot of work, man, but you know, mm -hmm. salespeople, if they can capitalize on a good market, good clients, you know, they're going to make more money in the long run. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so true. I'm, I'm an engineer as well. So, and, and I'm always working with sales, sales guys as well. And um, yeah, yeah. I understand. Wow, the what, whole... what, what type of engineer are you? What type of engineer? Uh, sales engineer. So uh, yeah, exactly like you, you know? So um, yeah, I work with a lot of sales guys as well. And yeah, I understand the whole engineering aspect of it. You've got to come up with solutions yeah. and compile the requirements and everything, put together yeah, tenders yeah. and yeah, yeah. All that type of you stuff. You know what's funny? You know, when you're on the engineering side, you have, you say salespeople have it made. They have it easy. All they do yeah. is go golfing and take customers out to dinner. Yeah. And then when you go to the sales side, you're like, it's not so easy. And you realize engineers probably have it easier because they don't have to deal with clients. Yeah. You know? yeah, so it's yeah. always the, you know, the back and forth between sales and engineers. So yeah. 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 But I love what you said um, is that you gotta be, you gotta love it. You gotta be passionate about it and you love sales. Isn't it? So yeah. could you elaborate a bit more about that one? To be, to be I, I think the, you know, you know, it's funny because I was having this conversation. Um, like some people are afraid to present pricing. I, I was, I was quoting a statistic and I think it was either Gartner or somebody came out with a stat that says 73% of salespeople, when they do a presentation, don't present price or put a proposal. Mm. And so they challenged me. I said, what do you think? Why do you think that is? And I said, I think one, they're scared. I think, but they're scared because they don't understand the value of what they're selling. Mm. I mean, they really don't understand it. So for mm. example, I sell sales training. Mm. I know that if I can help your company get their sales team up and running and selling more, your company will stay in business. Your company will be able to hire more people to grow. These people that you hire have families. They'll mm. support them as well. This is why sales training is, you got to have it. Yeah. And so I truly believe in what I'm selling. Mm. And I wonder if a lot of people don't believe what they're selling. They're just selling it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think if you're just selling it, it's, it's, it's not going to work for you. And a phrase I, I heard a while back, I wish it was mine, but it's a great line. It says, be a product, always be a product of the product. Mm -hmm. Always be a product of the product means if you're selling something, make sure you use it, make sure you mm -hmm. do it. You know what I mean? So if you, mm -hmm. if you sell pools, you better have a pool. You know, mm -hmm. if you sell cosmetics, you better be using that, those cosmetics. True. That whole yeah, thing. exactly. And so I think a lot of people aren't a product of the product. Mm. Now, somebody out there is probably thinking, Quad, well, wait a minute. I can't afford an enterprise level system, da, 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 whatever it may be. Yeah. I said, yeah, but there's another way that you can be a product of the product. You can talk to your customers and ask them, how has this helped you? How did mm. this help you make more money? How did it help you increase revenue, reduce costs, or expand market share, as I always say, right? Mm -hmm. And then... When you, when you hear it straight from the customer, it's like you sell differently. Yeah. Because yeah. now, the phrase I always use is that we're not salespeople. We're value merchants. Mm. We bring value. We're not mm. selling a product. We're selling value. And we're hoping for value in exchange. That's all we're doing. Mm. That's so true. It's like that inner conviction. Like once you own it, um, yeah. you actually use it. You've got the inner conviction. And, and, and it presents on your voice, everything, your whole body language, everything. Yeah. So. That's you got amazing. it, man. That's it, man. I, yeah. I, I love that phrase, man. Inner conviction, man. That's a nice <laughs> phrase, man. I, li I like that. I might steal that from you, man. Awesome, man. Awesome. But I let's love get that. Let's get some t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, let's get some t-shirts. Inner conviction, brother. You know? 
<laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, and um, yeah, you're also um, you're working with Grant Cardone, and you were speaking at the 10X conference as well. How was that? Yeah, uh, mm. working with Grant is a unique experience. Mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> unique. Uh, you know, good dude, man. The guy, the guy. I mean, the guy's just a straight up hustler, man. And mm -hmm. they, you know, if you, you, what you see is what you get. That's kind of a WYSIWYG, right? It's what mm. you see is what you get. Uh, but I, but I did get to see another side of him. I saw him, uh, you know, uh, I'll just say behind the scenes. Mm. And, and the, the guy has a work ethic, man. He wants to work, and, and he really is more. Uh, I guess not, not toned down. I don't want to make it sound like, you know, he converts into, you know, somebody who's really quiet. He's not that, mm. but you know, there, 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 even though he comes across with a lot of rough edges, man, there is a softer side. of. Mm. Mm. True. That once you're part of his inner circle, you know what I mean? Mm. The dude, the dude will hook you up. He'll, he'll look out for you. Yeah. I think yeah. People, gravitate towards them within his company because they feel that mm, you know what i mean mm, mm, and mm. so it was it was it, it was interesting doing the 10x uh and that was their first 10x and then we did a i think a two or three day boot camp after that mm, mm. and then i got the real grant cardone blast and we had we had fun <laughs> man. It, was, it was it was a good two three day event uh and again man the guy's just non-stop man the guy's a freaking machine man yeah, yeah, super yeah. nice guy, man. He really is, man. He's just like, he's, I think he's like me. I think he's like, and maybe like you as part of a sales, if you're a sales guy, yeah. you know, you got ADHD bad sometimes. You're like, yeah. you know, that, you know you're like, oh, what are we doing next? Yeah, it's and interesting. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, cool, I saw the cool. interview. Yeah, I saw the interview between you guys and it was amazing. And it, it, I was Oh, thinking, yeah. I mean, he was like, yeah. he was like poking at me, man. He just kept poking at me. I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, I'm trying, and I remember he just kept interrupting me and I just kind of let him talk. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I would yeah. just wait till you finish and I just jump right back in. So, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and then so now we also uh, created a partnership where my Sales Velocity Academy is actually on his Grant Cardone University. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's also a nice partnership that we've had for a couple of years now. It's worked yeah. really well. So, yeah. they're hustlers, man. They're, they're good people who hustle, man. Mm, love it. Love it. And uh, I noticed that, you know, I can sense the enthusiasm in your voice and the energy and everything. I'm curious. What is your daily routine? Like, um, obviously, yeah, you, you look fit and everything. I'm curious. What is your daily routine to to you know keep your A game? Oh man, that's well. The 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 uh, early morning routine is, is mm. probably the, the easiest one to peg. It's I I typically get up at about five five thirty. Try to do five. Okay. And by five thirty, I'm at Starbucks. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, and then I stay there for two hours. And okay. So what I do is the ritual is you know for five thirty to seven thirty we do two hours at Starbucks. And one of the things I do that's really helped, I mean, this is, this is going to be seem like, like such a simple thing, but I'm telling you, it transformed my concentration because again, ADHD bad, right? Okay. So what I do is, now this, this is just my trick. This is my trick. Okay. Yeah, this is my trick. Okay. So I got some Bose over the ear noise cancellation, you know, headphones, right? Yeah. Step okay. One. Nice. Step two, download on your phone, on your phone, <laughs> download a two hour instrumental mix no words just instrumental instrumental mix I, okay yeah instrumental mix i i like chill step you know what chill step is is that it's the like, uh, minimal beats uh um, yeah 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 something like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. It, well, uh, you know how it's there's a uh, well there's dubstep right mm -hmm. but chilled it's dubstep oh, chill okay. that's chill step so i like Very it nice. because it has beats and so what I do is I pick one two hour mix, mm. no words, because if it, if it says anything, it interrupts your thought pattern. Okay. So what I then do is I hit the, the play button and I'm in the zone for two hours. Okay. Now here's the cool thing. I never change the mix when I'm working on a project. So for example, I just finished my 14th book on upselling. So for the whole duration of writing that book, three months, I listened to the same song. Oh, wow. Because what happens is, what you, you're not you stop listening to it. You hear it, but you stop listening to it, and mm. all of a sudden it puts you in a trance. I can't explain it. Mm. But if you use the same song over and over again, it's there. It's like background noise, like white noise, and then it just puts me in a trance, and I can just I can just focus. Wow. And when the song's over, I'm over. I'm done. Okay. You know what I mean? So I like I go okay. I'm done writing. So yeah. you that I try to write for about. Uh, hour, hour and a half, and then I try to do some reading mm. combination thereof. So I, I believe in, uh, there's a neuroscientist by the name of Dan Ariely. 
who wrote Predictably mm. Irrational, something like that. Okay. And he said that everybody has two golden hours. You know what I mean? Mm. Two golden hours. So think about that. If, if, if we all have two golden hours, what are your two golden hours? Mine is 5.30 yep. So I can just hyper-focus. Oh, wow. That's incredible. So you stay focused and um, you're listening to the chill beats and it's, um, it's like NLP, isn't it? Like you're so it's like coding your mind. Um, yeah. you're putting yourself in that trance. Oh, that's amazing. It does. And, okay. and I use it for walking. So also my, my, I don't, for me, you know, I, I try not, I try to eat smaller portions. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in, I have no control. I accept that. I have, really? When it comes to food, I have you look no pretty control. fit. Yeah. Okay. But what I do is I do very small portions. Interesting. And so my biggest meal is midday. I, my dinner is typically very light. Okay. And that's how I do it. And then my thing is walking. So when I can't concentrate, like, you know, my, my biorhythms go down about one o'clock, two mm. o'clock, like everybody else is probably. Okay. And so what I do is I put on the headphones and I go for maybe a 30, 40 minute walk. Nice. Nice. So you're you staying know, active. And I, and, okay, great. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm a walker. That's, okay. that's what I'm a walker, dude. I can't, you know, we, we go to the gym once in a while, lift weights, but you know, I'm not a bodybuilder or anything, but, but to try to keep some of this off. Yeah. Walk. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So um, you, you've been through a lot in, in your sales career. You've, you've been on the phones, you've been through ups and downs as well. Uh, we're currently going through, as you know, we're going through the coronavirus and everything. What's advice would you give to other people who are also salespeople and trying to, you know, um, build up their business in this unpredictable time? Yeah. I, you know, it's, 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 it's not a good time. I mean, mm. you know, I think everybody's, uh, you know, when you, when you look at what's happened, let's, let's walk through where people are now hunkered down in their houses, you know, the businesses are all closed. So unless mm. it's food or a necessity, they're not open. Uh, people are holding on. And I think, you know, whether anybody says it out loud or not, people hold on to their cash now, right? Because they don't mm. want to spend Yeah. because they don't know how long this, we don't know how long this is going to last. Know. Right. Yeah. So now we're in a situation where nobody's spending, you know, and right now it's like, how do you maintain your level of motivation? Mm. And I would still say I would break my day up in two, which is still maintain an outreach program. Mm -hmm. I want to be so simplistic about this. Or here's an outreach my program, outreach yeah. program. And then the other day is like, all right, the second part of the day is like, all right, how do we now retool, rethink and redirect what we need to be doing? Mm -hmm. And that's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, if I can find a silver lining in this, it's for me, it's been like, oh, well, let me think about what I need to start doing now. Let mm. me start rethinking about if this happened again, which hopefully it won't ever. But even if it did, what would I do differently? What would mm. I have done differently? Yeah. I don't know if you knew this, but I have a show. Uh, did I have a reality show on TV? Have you ever um, seen it? No, I haven't seen that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So well, I, had a, I had a full season on Spike TV. Oh, wow. Which is now the Paramount Network. Mm -hmm. So if you type in life or debt, as an old money. Life or debt, yep. uh, yeah. Yeah. So I had that, that's my show. Mm. And so I'm the host of the show and we have 11, 11 episodes. That's always showing. Oh, wow. Uh, by the way, it shows down there also. Okay. Yeah. I cool. I'll check it out. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Season one is available. It's on Amazon, <laughs> Hulu, all that. I don't yep. get any commissions, by the way. Yep. And so in that show, the, the structure of the show is I show up for, um, uh, uh, for five days with a family that's struggling mm. financially. My job is to do an assessment figure out how to redirect them and then give them a blueprint. Then after five days I leave, I come back in 90 days to see how they're doing. Wow. Now. And so it's a great show, life or debt. Life and or debt. So yeah, that's, it should have been picked up for a second season, but it was yes. caught right in between the, the merger sale, whatever. Mm. But what's interesting is that in that show, I remember talking to families and this number was out there at the time. It's still valid. I think it more so today that 75% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. True. Five. Mm. Right. And 61% according to Forbes have maybe a thousand bucks in their savings. Mm. Why do I say all this? Because you look at car debt, student debt, all these debts, and a lot of Americans here in the U S are in debt. One of the reasons I love sales is because we can control our economic input by economic money coming into us. So true. And mm. so if you're sitting at home saying, okay, this is a disaster, two things might be happening right now. One is you're not financially stable. Mm. And obviously that's going to cause a lot of, you know, a lot of concern. It's probably kind of killing you right now. Yep. The second part might be that you might start thinking about, you know, how do I become financially stable? Mm. And mm. sales is a great way to become financially stable. So I would be thinking now, 
what do I need to retool, rethink, redirect in order to be able to sell more? Mm, mm, mm. That's, That's amazing. What I would be doing, man. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Split the day. Let's, let's, let's prospect so I don't feel guilty. But then the other half is what? What do we need to do so we're not in this situation again? Mm, mm, mm. Love it. Yeah, so uh, I'm curious about your, your sales course. So uh, obviously it's all online. It's got videos. And um, what, what's the modules that, that's included in that? I'm really curious about that. We have like, uh, there's 50 courses and mm -hmm. it's like 500 plus videos. Yeah. Okay. And so I think, you know, let me go through some of my favorites. One, yep. my favorite, there's one in, called inside the customer brain, which okay. really focuses, it's almost like a neuroscience uh, module, which doesn't focus on how to sell, but how people buy, mm -hmm. like how they make buying decisions. So you don't have to push, you can just kind of nudge them along. Mm. Another course I have is one of my, I think the one that's made me the most money in terms of implementation. And if it's the only course, if you were to say, what's the one course, the one module you would have everybody go through, and that's the blocking objections, mm -hmm. where I teach people True. how to raise objections and then block them, right? Mm -hmm. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll send you a, uh, a copy of the book, awesome. you know, the PDF, Okay, and then yeah. maybe you can just distribute it to your list as a okay. gift from us. How's that? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thanks a lot for yeah. that. I really appreciate that. Yeah. No worries, man. I'll put no a worries. link on, on the website and everything. And, and yeah, so that, you know, it's a great book. Read yeah. that yeah. book. I mean, that mm. book is gold. Yeah. That book is gold. Uh, it has Inside like 22 customer, yeah. different scripts for 22 different types of objections. Mm -hmm. So all you got to do is rewrite the scripts your way. And it's very powerful. I got one called, you know, on prospecting, which is, you know, how do you create a cadence? Your call, your email you know, what to leave in the voicemail and how to kind of create a rhythm. Mm. Because I think, you know, we're, we're, what I'm seeing today, and I'm starting to realize that where mm. we all fail, where we all fail, mm -hmm. is that if, if it doesn't become part of a process, it doesn't get done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So in other words, if you don't have a process for prospecting, it's just not going to get done. And if it does get done, it won't get done consistently. Yeah, system. Yeah, that's right. You mm, know? Mm. So yeah, it is about systems, but if it isn't part of the process or part of your system, it just simply doesn't get done. Mm. Like for me, the getting up in the morning, that's part of the system. Now that's part of the process. That's right. Yeah. You get up, you know, boom, you're there at five 30, you're doing your mm. thing. And so then it becomes that rhythm you get into. And I think that salespeople don't realize that that's really a good thing. Because once you kind of get into this rhythm, it's like, you know how you can spend a whole day and at the end of the day, you go, did I, did I do anything today? Did yeah, anything yeah. get done? Today? Yeah. And, it's, and then you feel guilty, right? You're like, I didn't mm. get anything done today. Mm -mm, Damn it. Mm -mm. And, but what if, you know, you front loaded your day with all the hard stuff? And mm. let's say those two golden hours, I would take my high leverage activities, which would probably mm -hmm. be cold calling or prospecting, right? Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? From nine to 10 or, or for nine to 11, take your pick. This is all about calling. Shut the door, you know, do not disturb on the phone. I'm making calls mm. like that. As you move towards the day through the day, you're not going to feel bad about not getting stuff done. Mm. And we all know this, right? We all know this intuitively, but we still don't do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I also um, heard a really great quote that you said, you said, get out of sales presentation into the sales conversation. So could you right. learn back a bit about that one? That's a really great quote. Oh, yeah. Saying. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a big one right there because mm. <clears throat> you, we've all been in that presentation where the person's in the presentation. You're like, yeah. Hey, can you just talk to me? Can you just exactly. talk to me like a humanoid, right? Mm -mm. And I've, I've met salespeople who know how to shift away from a presentation. By mm. the way, I'm not saying you don't do a presentation, but how do you engage in a conversation? How do you get away from the slides? Like when I do my keynotes, I already know what's behind me. I don't even need to look at what's behind me. I can mm. just kind of side glance and I know what that slide is about. Yeah. I yeah. Everything on that slide. And so that allows me to focus in on the actual audience who I'm talking to. Mm. That allows me to have a conversation, but I also time my pauses and my questions. Mm. So for example, if I'm laying out a 45 minute keynote or presentation, I know that I'm, after two slides, I'm going to ask a question. Yeah, that's true. You know, I yeah. used to, you know sometimes uh, er, back in the day, I used to cheat. I used to put a little dot at okay. the bottom of my, my PowerPoint slide. Yeah, like bottom okay. left-hand corner, there was always like a little circle, a little dot. And that dot was my trigger to say, ask a question. Oh, ah, that's a good tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a real small dot. You, get, <laughs> you, you you'd probably think it was just like a dot that should be there. But that you was always like, hey, in, in the, now's yeah, the time yeah. to engage. 
Yeah. yeah. So you could just kind of, and so finding ways to get away from the presentation and have a conversation, because isn't that what we want, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so we true. Talk to, mm. Just talk to me. Because we, we, we just go through things. just the presentation, right? We're just okay, you know, about us, yeah. Yeah, this is what we do and everything. And I see it so many times. Yeah, everyone's just, right. Yeah, running through the presentation and okay, I, if I do more presentations, I'll be fine. But I like it, you know, you've got, you've got the, the, the trigger that actually interacts with people and makes it into a conversation. Like, awesome. bam, like, mm. like one of the biggest mistakes I've seen a lot is that, you know, the companies will come in and do a presentation and they spend the first five, 10, maybe 15 minutes talking about themselves. Here's who we are. Here's our mission statement. Here's how long we've been around. Here's how big our facilities are. Here's all our points of presence. Shall we show mm. you the map? Mm. Here's the products we have. And the customer's going, <laughs> why am I here? Yeah. You know, I don't want to hear this. They, they tune off. The yeah. 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 But now imagine and you probably know this already, that if you start out the conversation talking about, here's what we see that's happening in your market. Mm. And then you start having that conversation. You just start chopping wood, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm saying, look, your market right now is going through some upheaval. We've done the research. Here's what we found. You tell me if I'm wrong. Mm. Boom. One, because of this event, da, 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 your market's been impacted. You have more competitors in the market. Now you're probably, your margin, da, 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 probably shrinking by 2 or 3% on an annual basis, blah, 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 blah. I said, is that, a, is that an a honest assessment or a real assessment of what's going on in your business? Mm -mm. And if the person says, uh, yeah, that's an honest assessment. Yeah, yeah. See, that's, that's a conversation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it'll tell you, if, and, and, and the thing is, even if you're wrong, I'm not mm. saying you got to get 100% right, but if you're in, the, you're in the 80, 90%, they're going to say, yeah, but you missed a couple of things. Or you can mm. even ask, is there anything I missed? Mm -mm -mm. He says, yeah, Vic, you missed this and this. Now, let's say some, the customer, let's go with that. The customer okay. say, yeah, you missed this and this. Is that a negative? No. Mm -hmm. The fact that they volunteered information is good feedback. Yeah, yeah. Second, now you're smarter for the next presentation. If you, yeah. know, you know what I mean? There's no yeah. lose here. But now, yeah. because they're telling you this, even when somebody tells you, you missed something, I'm like, what did I miss? Mm -hmm. So my, you know, one of the things as salespeople we have to do is put our egos to the side. When we don't know something, just say you don't know. We know this. Mm -hmm. We know this, but yet we're afraid of it. You know, yeah. I can't tell you. Today I was on a, um, on a, uh, uh, I was listening to, you know, Anthony Inarino? Uh, no, I don't know. Sales books. Okay. Smart guy, super smart guy. Uh, he was doing a webinar. I said, well, let me get on his webinar. I want to hear what Anthony has to say because I love his books uh, and I love, you know, his ideas. And he threw all like two nuggets in there for me. Okay. I was like, oh, and I, and I wrote him some feedback, you know, we're on the chat like this live. I said, man, yep. I love this. I didn't think about this. Thank you. Mm. You know, and because we're always learning, I don't mind telling people I learned something, mm -hmm. you know? And so even, even the best of the best always need a refresher course or somebody comes at you from a different direction. Mm. But when you're, what, what I mean to say by this is that when you remove the ego, you can have these conversations. Oh, okay. You become a little more vulnerable. If you know what I mean, it's mm. okay, man. Mm. But don't be afraid to have the real conversations. If you ask people how they like to be sold, they'll tell you, well, I just want salespeople to be direct with me. Mm. But then when they start selling, they're not direct, which yeah. is the irony. <laughs> so you know what I mean? It's just like you have to, so, yeah, you have to address the elephant is, in the room. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I think sometimes we have, we do a presentation when we're not comfortable with our content. Yeah. Okay. You know, when we're not comfortable with our content, we do a presentation because we're afraid that they might ask questions. Mm. But those who know their content love having conversations mm -hmm. because they know that that is a shorter path to getting to a yes or a no. Very yeah. quickly. Very yeah. true. Very true. Yeah. Um, I've got a, <clears throat> like with sales, salespeople, we're dealing with different personality types all the time. Um, you, you've got the dominance, you've got the influentials and, um, but there's also these types of that of people that we've, clash with you know it could be like detailed oriented people that nitpick at everything right and you might not have the answer yep. for it how do you go around navigating your way through it is it just drop the ego and just you know do you change yep. your personality type to match with theirs or is there some sort of technique that you do there's there's always that type right. of person that you clash with yeah. right yeah what a great question that, that's a really good question it's a great question because it's all about adaptability right mm -hmm. so it you know i came up with this model that i use and i and i just grabbed it from everybody else and just created my own bastardized version of yeah. my distance assessment and so i think i call one um socializing susan let me see if I amiable amy yeah analytical andy 
and dominating Dan. Yeah, these I love it. Four, these are my four <laughs> personalities, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so <clears throat> socializing, Susan just likes to talk, never really makes a bind. Yeah, decision. yeah. Amiable Amy is a person that likes to be listened to. Mm. Really listen to what I'm saying so you can understand. Analytical Andy is all about details, man. Give me oh, the numbers, yeah. man. Victor, just yeah. write it down for me. And then dominating Dan always wants to be right. Mm, mm. And so each of these personalities can exist in one room, which makes mm. it all interesting. But when I'm speaking <laughs> yeah. to it, let's say, let's say I come across an analytical Andy. I immediately go, tell me what it is you need from me in order to make a better decision or to see if this is a fit. Mm, tell me mm. what specifications. Let's get to some detail for you. Dominating Dan wants to talk. He mm. wants to demonstrate how much he knows. So I'm going to ask dominating Dan a lot of questions. Now, my job is not to tell him that he's right or wrong. My job is to ask him questions to help him clarify his thinking, but not make mm. him look bad. Yeah, yeah. And when and I'm he talking wants to, be to as well. Amy, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm talking to Amy and Amy. I'm just listening and asking questions. Oh, got it. Okay, so that, that's important to you. So, that's, so out of these three, which is your biggest priority right now? Socializing Susan is a person who just wants to talk. Mm. And all you can do with that person is make them feel good about themselves. And hopefully there'll be some type of, you know, they'll influence some decision. So those are my four boxes. Mm -hmm. Socializing Susan, amiable Amy, analytical Andy, Love dominating it. Dan. That's yeah. it. Love By the it. way, my, my acronym is SAD. SAD. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done that. Why is it sad? <laughs> because, yeah. we, okay, amazing, amazing. And, um, okay, so how about um, a lot of people still still struggle with this? You know, they, they get on the phone, they get objections, and there's always that fear, you know, um, and you've been through this a lot of times as well. So how can people overcome that fear of, of that rejection, pick up the phone? Like, you know, it can be a bit demotivating at times as well when you get yelled at. How, mm -hmm. What's your resilience type of, method in, in overcoming this just making phone calls or what is it or think about something yeah what, it's it's getting so much tougher let's acknowledge the reality <clears throat> though do you know yeah. what i mean sometimes we just try, try to put too much sweetness on this thing yeah and sometimes i think uh it's better to tell people what to expect you know there's the uh, there's something called the inoculation effect i don't know if you mm -hmm. know what that is the inoculation effect is that you know how you inoculate against a, a virus or a disease oh yep mm -mm. you inoculate but there's a, there's a way to inoculate, let's say, new salespeople. Mm. Let's say I say to you, you, you just joined the team, and I say, look, I said, the first 50 people you're going to call are not going to want to talk to you. Mm. So, and you go, okay, got it. He goes, that's just, just the way the business is. So go, go sell something. And so you're on call number 25. You're not depressed because, well, Victor told me. It's going to take at least 50, so let's go to 50. Yeah, that's right. So I inoculated you from getting, being disappointed early by telling you it's going to take you at least 50 calls. Mm. So let's, let's, do some, let's do some inoculation right now. On average, it'll take you about maybe eight to nine calls just to actually get that decision maker on the line. Mm -hmm. It'll take you, let's just call it 10. Let's just be easy about this. It'll take you another 10 maybe. I think the number is like 19, but let's just say another 10 to make it easier to actually get the meeting. Mm -hmm. It's going to take you 20 calls to get the meeting. It's a lot of now, effort, isn't it? Yeah. It is a lot of effort because mm -hmm. too many people are calling people. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's the reality. But now if you know that, if you know it's going to take you 20 calls, then in your mind, you, be, you put a system together. What's my process for reaching mm -hmm. out 20 times? Mm -hmm. Do I reach out every other day or every three days, every four days, whatever it may be? Do I reach out every Wednesday? And if I do reach out every Wednesday, what's the first voice I'm going to leave? What's the second mm -hmm. one? What's the third one? And what's happening here is that if you can create, one, the inoculation effect in your head, yeah. 20 calls just to get there, and I know it's going to take me two months, let's say it's a B2B sale, then all of a sudden your brain goes, hey, this is kind of what we expect. And all of a sudden your anxiety goes down. And I think salespeople struggle because they feel anxious because, you know, they don't have a cadence mm. and they don't know what they, what they should be measuring against. I mean, is, is three calls enough? Is four calls enough? No, 20 calls, 20 calls to get a meeting with a decision maker, knowing mm. that, boom, go, you're ready so you to go to, now. You've now got to know your numbers. Like, yeah. 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 And so what happens then is, again, you create a cadence, you know, okay, so I'm going to call week one, but after, after I call, I'm going to follow up with an email. By the mm. way, I've already scripted out my first voicemail that I'm going to leave. Love it. And then 
I'm going to send an email with the same thing. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to put that in my CRM, my customer relation management system, right? Yep. And then it's going to ping me that a week from today, I got to do this again. And now it becomes part of the process. We get back mm-hmm. to systems, yep. right? It becomes part of the process. So that's what they should be thinking about. How do I make it a system where I don't get frustrated? Because that's mm-hmm. really what we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. How do we continue to do something without getting frustrated? Answer, have a process. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. So um, one more question is, uh, let's say that you to go inside a time machine and you press a button and you go back maybe 10, 15 years and talk to your younger self. What would you say? They, I, this is the, by the way, I, <laughs> they also asked me this question. I have the answer actually. The, oh, the yeah? answer is I would be easier on myself. Easier on yourself. By that, I mean, by that I mean is that, you know how sometimes we just beat ourselves up? Yeah. For, 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 we, we do some stupid stuff, right? You know, I'm trying to keep it G rated here. Um, yeah. <laughs> some stupid stuff. Uh, you know, and sometimes it's like we beat ourselves too much. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. And, you know, I, I just can't get this right. I, why don't I learn these things? Why can't I do this? Why, you know what I mean? You just beat yourself up. Mm. And, I, and I would tell myself, you know, chill, brother, man, just chill. It'll be okay. It's all, it's all part of the learning process, mm-hmm. you know, because it is, isn't it? Isn't it just all part of the learning process? So I don't think take the more you beat up yeah. on yourself. Mm. what's that don't take life uh, too seriously right yeah just have fun with it yeah 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 just you know because we we all make mistakes the thing is you know you we look at other people sometimes and we think they have it all together and Mm. i'm like no you've made your mistakes i Mm. know they have yeah we've all made mistakes we've all done some of the stupidest things there's some things we all want to erase from our heads Mm. and we can't do it and so i would just say you know, be, be easy on yourself, man. Just chill. Enjoy the process. Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely love it. Well, um, okay. And also, how can people get in contact with you as well? How can people find you? I think the easiest way is just type in Victor Antonio into the search engines or yep. just go to victorantonio.com. Mm. If I can recommend my podcast, uh, it's a 10-minute podcast called Sales yep. Influence Podcast. Those are quick hits. As you know, they're just like in and out, 10 minutes, in and love out. Love it, love it, yeah. Everybody has 10 minutes, man, to, to listen to a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Then, well, uh, I'll be listening to that on, you know, every single day, so it's going to be amazing. Yeah. 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 Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast. Love it. You've got a great about, voice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. Uh, and then um, my YouTube channel has a lot of great free content. Mm, you mm. know, so we got over a thousand videos there. And if you want to become part of the Sales Velocity Academy, go to salesvelocityacademy.com. But just go to victorantonio.com. You'll find everything you need. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Victor, I really appreciate your time today. And um, yeah, sorry about the dog. We're going to do lots of editing on that one there. And, That's all right. Um, That's all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, Very um, cool, you know, man. I just got to ask about the sword in the background. What's the deal with the sword oh, in the background? A, um, yeah, it's a samurai sword. So I've had that for a few years. And yeah, just, you know, just love the whole samurai thing. And yeah, you're a warrior, right? You're always trying to fight through and... Yeah, By the way, always- did, did you know, you should have asked me this question. The one thing that nobody really knows, I am a samurai freak. Are you serious? I am a super <laughs> sam. I mean, I am a Kira Kurosawa, you know, Tatsu Shintaro, Satoshi, you know, the old, wow. like, I mean, I'm talking the old, like 19 The old school stuff, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, you know, Ran, you know, movies like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I love these movies, man. I there's there's a website called JP Films Online. It's called JP like Films, yeah, Online. yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you yeah, seen yeah. this website? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. JP Films Online. There's um, yeah, there's quite a lot of um, yeah, different videos and movies and stuff that you can. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Like the lo- the Lone Wolf series. Uh, I've watched every Lone Wolf. You know, uh, I watched the TV version and the movie version. Uh, but all the samurai movies, I, I love the, is your background Japanese? Um, no, Vietnamese, Vietnamese. Yeah. But Vietnamese. I grew up in there yeah, just watching like, yeah, samurais and everything. And, um, yeah, yeah it's amazing. Something about, yeah. The discipline yeah, or something, something about the rituals. Mm-hmm. Is it the rituals? Is it the culture? What do you think attracts you to I it? I think, um, yeah, I like it how it's, yeah, yeah. The, um, the discipline, like there's a lot of discipline and hard work that goes into perfection. And I yeah. love that, you know, it's, um, if you want to achieve something in your life, uh, whether in sales or doing a podcast, you have to get better and better every single day. And there's that discipline, you know, and, yeah. um, and Samurai Warriors have that discipline. They have that code that they follow. And um, sometimes it can be a lonely path. You know, obviously they're fighting alone, but, um, you know, they're always fighting against uh, some sort of challenge and, and they overcome it, right? So yeah. it's like Ryu in, in Street Fighter. So I really relate to that guy. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel that about the, the lonely path and, you know, sticking to a moral code. 
And I think also in their, you know, even though they joke about some of these techniques or exaggerate them, I think it's always interesting how, you know, even the most subtle adjustment to something, mm. holding a sword or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like all the difference in speed or something. Mm. And I, I think in selling, if I can tie it back into that, I yeah, think yeah, sometimes yeah. it's just that it's, it's adjusting. You know what I mean? Mm. When you talked about the different personalities, mm. it's adjusting. Mm. But it's it's being able to read the terrain. Mm. I think that's the tough part, right? Yeah. And so I, you know, if I if I can bore you with this analogy, the I think what it, when when you're new to sales, you're like thinking all the time. You're thinking. You're trying to sell. You're thinking. You're trying to sell. You're trying to remember. You're trying mm. to figure out how to respond. You know, anticipate questions. When you're doing it so much, now it becomes habit. So you don't have to use as much processing power anymore. And that mm. extra processing power you no longer have to use because it's ha habitual. Mm. That's the processing power that allows you to have an awareness mm. of your audience. Because that's what happened to me. Like when I speak in front of large audiences, years ago, my brain split. Much okay. like a piano player can do one thing with one hand mm. and, and uh, with another mm. and a guitar player. So my brain split and that, and a little meant that there's a brain that, that just keeps talking, knows what to talk about. Mm -hmm. It knows what the content is. But then there's the other part of the brain that's in surveillance mode. And it's constantly observing the audience. And I'll hear little voices in my head going, go to the left of the stage. We need to engage them more. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need to pick up your volume. You need to pick up your speed. Okay. Slow down. I think we're going too fast. Okay. Let this breathe right here. I mean, constantly in my head that's going on as i'm talking i'm hearing this this instructional stuff going on yeah isn't that weird yeah it's, it's like yeah that's that's that level you get to where it's like i am so aware of a stage yeah yeah that the voice guides me on stage it's really weird yeah that's a, because that's amazing about you that's what really attracted me to you was that you've been in this for over 20 years and uh, i'm really curious about all these little things that you do and um, yeah, for me, I, I think a lot about things and, and I'm always strategizing stuff. It's a lot of thinking, but I think you've gone past that whole thinking stage. And um, yeah, you, as you said, you observe things and you observe people and you know how to adjust. That's really cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think when you store it, I mean, one, one of the things people don't see, my wife sees this, obviously, mm. is when I walk around the house and I got a concept in my head, mm. I mean, you'll see me walking around the house going like this. <laughs> and what I'm trying to do is figure out what is the right movement and gesture on stage. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like, like, like the you guy down to that level. Wow. Was that down to that level of the, the movements and everything? Wow, never heard that before. Yeah, if you watch my presentation, it's all movement, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, do, yeah. Like you do that, and then he came like that, and I go, no, that looks weird when you do that. That doesn't, no, that doesn't work. And then you go like that. And then you go, okay, that's the gesture. Then I, then I go, okay, that's, so now I tell a story, I go, that's the gesture. Oh, okay. And then it's like, it just becomes very automatic. Mm -hmm. So I walk around the house just doing, you know, it's really yeah. weird. No, awesome, awesome. Cool, all right then. Well, um, Victor, I really appreciate your time today. And um, thank you, yeah, yeah, thank you for sharing your wisdom and gold with us. And, you know, um, we, we continue to, um, you know, watch what you're doing and, and, and you know, it's really amazing to see you know, how inspiring you are. You're inspiring people on stage. Thank you, brother, man. I appreciate and, uh, the work, yeah, man. We appreciate Yeah. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, yeah, wish you all the best for future endeavors. All right, man. I'll let you go. Let me know yep. when you post this and take care of that dog. Yeah, we'll do. All right. Thanks a lot for that. Yep. I'll, I'll send you the <laughs> link very soon. Man. All right. Thanks, mate. Bye.